Meantime, we're going to bring in my colleague, Ashley Banfield, host of Banfield. She is on the phone. We also have a former FBI agent, Tracy Walder, CIA agent as well. She'll be joining us uh, live as well. Ashley, let's start with you. I mean, this is almost two months in the making. Also a case you have been following closely with our colleague, Brian Enton. This is huge news this morning. It's a big exhale, I think, for uh, not just the University of Idaho community and the students and the parents of all those students and the community itself in Moscow, but it's a big exhale for everybody across the country who is not only worried for them, but also worried about the prospect that this could be something bigger. It could be a potential serial killer because the modus operandi was so unimaginable and so difficult to understand. Who does this? That's the question. Who does this? that. And to now have someone in custody, Nicole, we are shifting from what's been a mystery and a resolution and an appeal to the public for help, for clues, to a prosecution. And so what's going to happen now is that this person who has reportedly made a first appearance is about to go through an odyssey whereby defense lawyers are going to try to pick through every single thing that could have gone wrong in an investigation and in the collection of all the DNA and evidence from the house that you're looking at. As this remediation crew goes in, this is a sad moment. This is very, has very little to do with prosecuting this suspect. Um, but the things that are coming out will still be of significance. My assumption is, is that they're setting up the red tent and trying to shield the view, they probably don't want people seeing the bed mattresses coming out because right. that's where these kids are killed, and that is a, a very traumatic, um, it, even if it's covered, it's still a traumatic image. But defense attorneys will want to know. Defense attorneys will want to know the handling of every single thing that went out of that house at every single time and how it was handled and who wore boots and how many potential uh, DNA transfers might have happened or contaminations would have happened. And that's why we've been so curious about the 113 pieces of evidence that they collected before they, you know, did what you're seeing now, and that's the turnover uh, to remediation and cleaning. But this is absolutely fascinating. The extradition of this suspect from Scranton, Pennsylvania authorities across the country. I am so curious to find out what kind of trail did they follow? Mm -hmm. Did they follow a video trail? Because we lost them two towns out of Moscow, right? They were looking at two towns east of Moscow and a couple of gas station cameras. Did that suspect drive, let's say, a white car and make a trip across the country that is measurable by video surveillance? That will be part of this uh, prosecution. But it is absolutely fascinating to see that almost seven weeks later, finally a suspect in custody and the prosecution is in earnest. Well, and certainly, Ashley, we know that these investigators uh, know what they're doing. We know that there was so much work going on behind the scenes. You know, people became frustrated thinking that the lack of updates meant that there was a lack of progress being made. We see now with this arrest that, in fact, was not the case. But when we see uh, this cleanup starting to begin, you know, there's a lot of people who theorized, and don't know, but theorized that this suspect could not have acted alone. Uh, do you think we'll potentially see more arrests coming? You know, that's a really good question. Um, but no one till now has suggested that this is anything more than um, one weapon and one suspect. In fact, it seemed as though they were speaking in singular quite frequently. Mm -hmm. um, I was fascinated just to hear last week, we don't know if uh, the suspect or the person or the, you know, the guilty party is still in town or not. That was just last week. Now, I don't know if that was a red herring because they're still trying to catch the person um, or what it was. But I, I, I think in order to commit something like that, unless you're a drug cartel, uh, I think they would have said by now we're looking for multiple people. Um, but they've kept, their, they've kept their cards pretty close to the vest, which, by the way, let's go back to that prosecution piece. That is a really good thing. Right. <laughs> if you keep your cards close to the vest, it means that pretty much everything we don't know is everything the killer does. So that is extremely helpful, especially, Nicole, especially if they Mirandized him mm -hmm. or her. I'm assuming it's a man. Um, 
if they Mirandized the suspect right away and still were able to have some form of interrogation, because then you are on the record for everything you say, and you can't change it later, not without consequence. And so whatever this person said upon arrest, and here's the number one thing that I'm hoping for. I'm hoping this person said, I was never in that house. I don't know who you're talking about. I've never met them. I've never seen them. Because if that's the story, then that's the story that's on the record. And there better not be any of your DNA in that house, or you're going to have some explaining to do. Right. And not, not to Nicole Burley, but to 12 jurors. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.